What's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript do you need to know today to get hired by 2023? Let's get into this right now. This is a question that I have received many, 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 many times, right? And this is an answer I've given many, many times through the comment section. But the reason I bring this up now is because this is actually a question that I asked the CEO of Boot.dev on one of my recent episodes on my podcast. If you wanna check it out, link in the description below. But let's hear his answer to how much HTML, CSS, and JavaScript does a web developer, does a front-end software engineer need to know? Let's look at it right now. So how much HTML, CSS do developers even need to know? in the front end aspect. You're going to need it, but like HTML and CSS aren't the hard part. Like HTML is a markup language, right? You kind of learn the basic uh, building blocks of like divs and, and things like it's really not, it just doesn't take that long to kind of get familiar with the structure of an HTML document. And then CSS, <laughs> you could spend so long mastering CSS, but at the end of the day, at most companies you, you go to work at, you will not be the designer. And this is where I really struggled um, initially was I thought, well, to be a front-end developer, I need to be really good at design. That's not necessarily the case. Most companies you work at are going to have a designer who will give you a design, either like an image or a Figma file or you know something in Sketch. That Your job is just to translate it into code. Um, so, I mean, you'll need to know CSS. I mean, I'm just gonna plug one of my favorite tools. I use Tailwind CSS on the front end of of uh yeah of, of okay. boot dev primarily like because <laughs> yeah the, the thing about css is like it's not crazy hard to figure out how it works you know you've got borders you've got shadows you've got these things you can google things when you get stuck but what is hard is writing like clean css so like we're, i think we're all familiar with the idea of clean code things like you know not reusing code you kind of abstract it into functions writing clean css is like I'm convinced a near impossibility. So the answer is you you do need to learn HTML and CSS, uh, but you're going to need to spend much more time on JavaScript. Like my, my guess is 75% plus of your learning journey to that first front end job is gonna be JavaScript in some framework. I 1 million percent, 100% agree with what Lane just said. Okay, now this is a very important topic. And so listen carefully. So I think one of the biggest mistakes that a aspiring developer makes when learning how to code is that they spend way too much time either learning particular languages, spending way too much time that they need to, or again, just to add on top of that, learning the wrong technical languages out there, right? And just like what Lane said, what people tend to do is spend way too much time with HTML, CSS. Why? He said that when you work as a front-end developer, a lot of aspiring developers think that you need to be the best designer. A lot of aspiring developers think that you need to have good design skills. No, that is not the job of a front-end engineer, front-end developer, web developer, front-end software engineer, you name it. Our job is to take a design that a UI UX designer gives us and when we turn that design into reality, not with a pen and paper, but using actual code. And so I like the point that he said because what Lane said was people spend way too much on HTML CSS. People spend way too much on that thinking that they have to be the ones who think of creative designs. But the thing is, that's not our job at all. Our job is to turn what people created with Photoshop, with Adobe XD, with, I don't know, you name it, they create these beautiful designs and our job is to turn that into an actual picture and code. So then how much HTML and CSS does a developer even need to know enough to get hired? What you need to know is pretty much how to what? What is the DOM, right? How, what is the basic structures when building an H a website using HTML? I mean, look at Craigslist. They have all of the basics down on craigslist.com. Not the best example, but that's literally HTML. Maybe some CSS to make the website more mobile friendly, but that's pretty much it, plain and simple. I think that what you need to do is just know what divs are, what labels are, right? What is the header? What is the body? What is it? What are the HTML tags? What is the anchor tag? You need to understand how the DOM works. What are all these different elements when it comes to HTML? Why is that so important? Because you need to at least have a basic foundation. I would say strong foundation in HTML, which only takes maybe a month, if not less to understand, not fully understand, but like get a grasp on. And then why you need to understand this because now that you understand how HTML works, what is the structure of a body, of a header? You need to know just the basics enough to be able to use CSS. Why? Right, what's the whole point of CSS? You use CSS to make things look pretty as hell. 
that is pretty much it. You use CSS to make things mobile friendly. But people sometimes tend, tend to spend way too much time on CSS when so many people like me, so many people like Lane, so many people like many other front-end developers tend to use a front-end framework and library to build these beautiful websites. We no longer have to write this from, from scratch. Well, some companies do, unfortunately. But we use libraries that allow us to build these websites more quickly than ever, more fast than ever, and make them as clean as possible by using a CSS or a JavaScript or, or a front-end library like Tailwind, right? Like Tailwind CSS. Now, there is one thing I want to disagree with Lean on one point, which is this. He did say HTML and CSS is not the hard part. I agree, but I also disagree. I think that people tend to misunderstand with Lane primarily being a backend developer, I could honestly understand why he would say these words. Because as a backend developer, and I now work in backend, it is hard to tell, <laughs> right? What I do in backend is much more difficult than what I've ever done as a front-end developer, right? Maybe it's because as a front-end developer, I went to the mid-level position, I never became a senior front-end developer, and I moved to backend right after that. Maybe that could be it. But from what I've seen and what I do now, backend development is much more difficult from my perspective, right? But what I'm trying to say is that HTML CSS is a lot harder than what people realize. But I want, what I want people to be able to grasp and understand is that the reason that you don't need to know enough, a, a lot, or all of the HTML CSS that's out there before you move on to JavaScript is because of this, Google. You can literally Google anything on how to build anything in HTML CSS. You're using a front end library, a CSS library like Tailwind CSS. What can you do? Google. How do I build a hamburger menu using Tailwind CSS? Literally type that into Google, copy the code you find on the internet, and paste that into your text editor. Boom, you have a hamburger menu. How do I build a footer using Tailwind CSS or whatever, or Bootstrap, you name it. Maybe you're still using Materialize, which has been around for a minute. Google, Google, Google. The whole point of what we're trying to say is that the amount of HTML CSS you need to know is enough to the point where you now, you now know how to Google and research things on the internet to help you build what you don't know as fast as possible, right? That is it. And then what he says next is this. He says that JavaScript is the harder part. <laughs> I agree with him a million percent on this. JavaScript will be very difficult for everyone trying to learn how to code. Why? Because JavaScript, for most cases, will be the first programming language that you ever learn. When it comes to JavaScript, it's not even just JavaScript anymore. There's vanilla JavaScript. Uh, some companies still use jQuery, right? Companies nowadays either use Svelte.js, not as much use AngularJS, but it's still out there. And a lot of other companies now are using React.js. And then even when you learn React.js, that's not even enough anymore. When you learn React.js, what is it about? Now you move on to using Next.js. Next.js makes using React.js even that much more better. Not even just that. Because you know JavaScript, now you need to use another tool like TypeScript to help you write your JavaScript, to help you write as less bugs, as little bugs as possible. Right, so there's a ton more different things that you need to be able to learn. So then the question then is, how much JavaScript do I need to know, Chris? That, I'll talk about in the next video. <laughs> Just kidding, let's talk about that right now. So obviously, there are going to be a lot of things that you need to learn in JavaScript, and I can only go over so much. But number one, I think the most important part is to learn the terminology. As a developer, you need to not just know how to sound like a developer, right? Like people say, but you need to know developer talk. Why? Because when you speak with other developers, especially in JavaScript, a lot of developers will use terminology that you probably even never heard of. Like, what is a map? Like, how do you map around an array? What is an array in the first place? What's an object? What's JSON? That's not even JavaScript, but you use JSON a lot when it comes to JavaScript, at least I did. So being able to understand these different terminologies from functions to for loops to you name it, just being able to understand the terminology on different things is extremely important when you start learning JavaScript. Don't just skip around things when learning JavaScript. Understand the terminology. Now, in the link in the description below, I'll put a list of different terminology that you can learn when it comes to JavaScript. Hopefully this helps, but let's go to the next part. All right, so I'm gonna go through this list really quick on my phone, all right? So number one, when it comes to JavaScript, you need to learn things like a Boolean, number, strings, etc. the different operators when it comes to working with JavaScript, right? You need to learn even TypeScript to help you again, avoid writing bugs. TypeScript will save your life as you learn this. Next, what you need to learn are things like how to work with arrays, how to work with different objects. What the hell is even object-oriented programming? The basics are what you need to learn when it comes to this. And then, and then even on top of that, you need to learn how to manipulate the DOM. How do you write click functions when it comes to JavaScript? What is a map? What is a function? What is an if-else statement? How to write an if-else statement? How 
how to use operators like double uh, equal sign or triple equal sign. When to use back ticks, when to use semicolon, I mean, semi, yes, yeah, se I mean, you, really, you don't really need to use semicolons in JavaScript, but pretty much all of the basics when it comes to JavaScript, enough to allow you to manipulate the DOM. On top of that, you need to learn about events listeners when to wait for a click and etc you name it this will be especially useful when you start working with apis but above all else how much javascript do you need to know you do not know enough javascript if you haven't even built two or three websites using javascript so many people will just learn 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 that's a mistake that people make oftentimes is that they continue to learn non-stop when it comes to javascript but they don't build anything so your goal when you do learn something in JavaScript, is to build as many things as possible to help you apply what you learn, make sure you don't forget it, and you build a strong foundation and get hired from there. Anyway, I hope that helps. That's how much HTML, CSS, and JavaScript you need to learn. If y'all like this video, let me know. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.